Okay, great. So can we record it? It was recording. Okay. 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 Um, hi, everyone. Yeah, thanks for. Okay, is everybody? Okay. So, um, thanks for coming on this rainy day, particularly um, Bernard Shimi. Um, and I, I want to say today that I'm, I'm not going to um, introduce Bernard Shimi because you all, you all know um, who he is. But I'm happy to say that he's joining um, a conversation um, with, with us, uh, which means various faculty um, here in the room, and our students. And I think this is not only students from first year, there seem to be um, a range um, of students in the school, um, about the role of drawing in architectural theory and practice, right? So at the very beginning of the semester, we were making some announcements um, of changes in curriculum. To the faculty, um, to the faculty as a whole, as a whole, and as you know, we have a very large um, faculty here at Columbia, and it caused one of the most vigorous debates um, that we've ever had at a at a faculty meeting. You know, people were literally <laughs> um, shouting shouting at each other, but not in disrespectful ways, in ways that were that are really interesting, and we wanted to bring some of that energy to the students and continue that as a conversation. So we are organizing you know, a mini-series which we'll announce um, as it goes, you know, as the, as the semester um, develops. Um, so what we've done is we've changed the ADR2 um, drawing class, which is ar ar architecture drawing and representation, and you wouldn't think that it's such a big deal to change one class in the curriculum. But what we've done is not just to change the class, but to um, to pose it as a discussion or as um, you know, an integrated curriculum between the history and theory and of architectural drawing and representation, alongside um, introducing students to the multiple tools that they might to engage today as architects, which actually cause them to ask themselves what it is, what it is are the tools that architects can and must use, right? And since um, Bernard um, has been dean in the, in, the, in the last 10 years, you know, he's very well known for introducing uh, digital tools into architecture in one of the most um, uh, future, in, in, in the most future looking ways. Um, and what's happened now is there's been such an explosion of both tools and information that's available to architects that we really have to rethink some of those things that were introduced by um, the years in which Bernard Schumi was dean and the multiple exposure that our students have to, to these tools so that they can reflect intelligently um, on what we're, they're going to walk out of the school with. Okay, so with that, I introduce Bernard. Uh, okay, I, uh, uh, thanks, Laura. Uh, thanks, uh, Reinhold. Uh, I'll, I'll continue your introduction. In a way, uh, what happened is that, let me see, I have, yeah. Um, uh, when the, the whole, the, there was like 80, 100 people in that room, right? And uh, so Reinhold and, uh, and Laura explained uh, their respective take to, uh, to, to the course. And uh, at one moment, uh, I, s I, I start to get a little sort of anxious. And I see another person getting similarly uh, agitated uh, at the other hand of the room. And, it's, uh, and he starts talking, and it's, um, uh, it's Stephen Hall. And I find myself, I rarely agree with Stephen, but for this time, we were both sort of saying, hey, wait, there may be something else to drawing than what is being discussed. But it's a tricky thing, because uh, I'm going to show you diagrams and, and uh, most likely, I'm not going to generalize, I'm going to say that's the way I work. But at the same time, uh, I'm wondering if uh, that's part of a mode of working which might be changing completely today. 
In other words, we use different tools, we, do, we think differently, and so uh, I will not claim that what I'm going to tell you is the way to go. It's simply a way to go. So let me see how, all right. Uh, amusingly enough, when I accepted to do this thing today, I thought it was going to be very easy. I was just going to go to do this research. And then I realized it was a Pandora, Pandora's box. In other words, if you want to talk about drawing, you talk about how you work, and generally, I will not show that. I will not talk about that. So I started to, uh, to, to organize my talk in the one-second drawing, the two-second drawing, and the three-second drawing, right? Uh, and then it took me too far, so I'll, then I had somebody prepare a set of slides for me. But before that, I realized that also drawing is some, you can do certain things with drawing uh, that uh, are so, so really fast, but as soon as you enter the third dimension, things get a little more complicated. Imagine try to draw a Möbius strip. You can do it, but it's clumsy. It takes seconds to make it as a model. Uh, similarly, uh, if you try, this is taken by a student from, uh, from the work of a student in the intro class, uh, Introduction to Architecture, this uh, summer. If you try to connect points in space, if you try to draw it, it'll be very difficult. And if you try to make it into planes, it'll be even more difficult. So. Uh, uh, hence, models occasionally are faster and better than the, you know, the, the, the two-dimensional thing. Also, of course, what I'm going to show you are drawn, done by this pen, right, which I use all the time, and a piece of paper like this, 11, eight and a half by 11. But there's no particular reason it should be a pen and it should be a piece of paper. You can do it just as well, you know, with your iPad. So, hence, no fetishization of the pen, no fetishization of the, uh, of the, of the support. Uh, it's just about, and this is what I would like to communicate, is just about a mode of thinking. Uh, and that's why you, I called it the art of notation and not the art of drawing or the art of sketching. By the way, in a little piece of text somewhere else, I'm sort of saying, by the way, what I'm going to show you to you, they're not sketches. I hate the word sketch. I hate the word croquis. Uh, the word reeks of Beaux-Arts aestheticizing ideology. I always thought that, mag that, that magazine showed a regressive ideology in its title. I prefer the word notation. The word sketch suggests it will be followed by a more elaborate version of the same, followed by a more elaborate form of representation. So what I'm doing is not, uh, are not uh, sketches. They are thoughts on paper. Again, you can do it on your iPad, uh, etc. Uh, and by the way, with the current uh, state of technology, uh, yeah, I'll go back. With the current state of technology, we still need our hands, but I can imagine doing sketches with wearing glasses that allow me to turn my head in such a way that I can uh, simply, I need the visualizing support. So it's not a fetishization of the, the tool or of the hand or of the pen. It's a mode of thinking. Uh, artists, when they want to talk uh, uh, about movement or sports people when they do, you know, football uh, uh, or um, dancers or so, will use forms and notations, movement notations. You cannot teach strategies to your football team if you don't have those diagrams. You cannot uh, organize an elaborate dancing uh, ritual without those diagrams. So in other words, they are abstractions that you need in order to. In the same way, the top drawing, uh, the top diagrams, well-known uh, Sergei Eisenstein, who tries to put on the same sheet of paper the film logic of the movement of the cameras, the music scores, and uh, the, um, uh, the, what he calls the pictorial composition. So in other words, 
it's again an intellectual, uh, 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 a abstract thing. It can start, that would be the one second uh, uh, diagram or notation in something which is as simple as that uh, or this. Uh, eventually it becomes a little more elaborate, but the more important one is really the first one, you know. Uh, so uh, then you can uh, take it to endless variation to do it as a serial transformative uh, uh, expression which can be its own purpose. In other words, those drawings, now they are not you know, quick things, they take a little longer, uh, have no other purpose than what you see on the wall. They don't go, they're not try, trying to become something else. Uh, or they can be an analytical tool. Uh, here I show a, a couple of well-known uh, uh, diagrams that were the first two drawings I did for uh, starting to work on the La Villette uh, competition over 25 years ago, whereby, uh, more than that actually, uh, where since it's a large-scale organization, you immediately look at what are the different possibilities. You don't try to, to, to find a solution right away. Uh, it's intimidating, it's uh, time-consuming to, to think. You just jot down very quickly what are the different alternatives. So you may have three, you may have 10, you may have 20, you just go through them and then you know whether here with some of them there is a discussion possible. In that particular case, the next move was try to uh, take some of these and put them on the site and by putting them on the site uh, see what are the different uh, effects that it can have. Amusingly enough, uh, uh, I, I always uh, noted that uh, uh, depending on which one you look at, you can recognize a project by Zaha Hadid or by Rem Kulas mm -hmm. or by other people, Cedric Price, who did these, uh, of course, without knowing my sketches and I not knowing their plans. In other words, there are certain constants in the way you work with a uh, a, a, a site out of the diagrams of organization, etc. And then, of course, you may do this, but then you will eventually uh, uh, take it and make it as a more uh, uh, rigorous version so that uh, the, uh, uh, how can I say, the uh, ambiguities of the hand drawings are being cleared by uh, the fact that uh, a little more precision will help. For. But nevertheless, the hand drawing, the first hand drawing, is as the advantage of clarifying one's mind, even though the next one might become that. Uh, unfortunately, I don't, I cannot find, I, was, I didn't have the time, I hope I can find it. There's a history to this drawing. The original, this drawing has been, you know, finalized not by my own hand, but by, by an, an assistant at the office. Uh, I actually, uh, a, a day before, or two days before doing this drawing for the competition, I broke my hand. I broke my, uh, my bone here. My hand was really swollen, and so I couldn't really use it. So I drew the same drawing with my left hand, uh, just a line drawing, very clumsy. The reason why I, I mention this is that it doesn't matter whether you're clumsy or not. It's not a question of skill, right? And eventually it becomes this. Another example of having then this time to invent a mode of notation. Uh, I was asked to do a, uh, I was told, oh, it would be great if you could design fireworks for, for the park. Now, I had never done fireworks before and I had never seen any way how you can do fireworks. So. Uh, uh, at the office, we invented a mode of notation. You can recognize their points and their lines and their sort of surfaces, and uh, sort of tried to invent. And of course, there is time, because you, uh, uh, fireworks are in time. So you do this, not unlike a little bit what you had seen earlier with this uh, Sergei Eisenstein uh, um, score, musical score. Uh, so these becomes architectural scores and uh, it's a mode of notation. Um, uh, by the way, for, the, for, for, for the, the honesty of the story, when I showed this to the, the fabricators of fireworks, they couldn't understand a thing. And they said, please tell me with your own words. And I said, sort of big red bang, bang, and that's, they were very happy. And we sort of, uh, 
All right. So, uh, so sometimes, again, it starts with this uh, speed, that's the, the second or the one or two second uh, uh, diagrams, that after that can be sort of conceptualized further and even become a plan and even eventually become you know, a, a project. So, but it's, that's where it starts. Uh, the, uh, or you have a piece of large field, you don't know, what, you know how you're going to approach it, so you take a number of, of, uh, of, of can I say, it, it's either part of the program or part of the site uh, and, or part of the landscape, and you just jot down each of these uh, uh, criteria, knowing that then, uh, in this particular case, for a number of years I was very interested, or I am still interested, but not for every project, on the notion of superimposition, superimposition of grids, or superimposition of, 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 of uh, different form of organizations, and the interaction becoming the actual project, so you can have many of these. Uh, and, uh, and in the case of that project, which was actually built, uh, but, uh, well, that's too long a story, uh, uh, is like almost 11 layers that are superimposed into one another, and uh, they are turned actually into a game, uh, whereby each of the pieces can be moved around, uh, but in a way, this is the real project, and uh, actually I can tell the story so much so that when we gave the client the game, the, 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 the how to do a master plan and how to, to uh, have the various tenants and the people building in that, the client said, oh, it's absolutely wonderful, that's exactly, that's all you need, thank you very much, Mr. Architect, goodbye. So we never did it, they build it by themselves. Uh, it's not great, but uh, that can happen to you. The, um, uh, Another site, uh, a roof, you go and see the site, and right after that, you realize that you don't want to demolish that building. It's too interesting what you're seeing. So you just, you know, throw. And this is, again, very, very fast. Uh, it's simply a way to, um, uh, to, to clear certain uh, conceptual, again, I say it's a form of, of thinking, uh, that that can be transformed into a, a, a model into drawings, those are drawings, by the way, interestingly enough, they're pre-computers, they're 1991, uh, they are drawn by hand. Uh, the advantage probably of drawing by hand, it's, it forces you to, uh, to know what you're doing when you do these complex drawings, because you can't make mistakes, it's hard to erase. Uh, and eventually, of course, we started to use the early softwares and do something which was substantially more representational. Look at the difference between this, which is uh, simply an idea, a concept, and this, which is already a form of representation. But interestingly enough, at the time you didn't have the hyper-realist softwares, so you see already, you still see the component of the project. If I was to do one with some of the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the softwares, or if I get to uh, uh, the various uh, D-Box or other professional renderers, you will not see the concept anymore very often. And then the real building becomes this, of course. Uh, but the concept is here. It's those, the same one as at the very beginning. The roof is simply floating over the existing town uh, or over the existing buildings that were there before. Amusingly enough, for, for the, the, the little story, as I was working on, it was a competition, and uh, uh, there were two finalists. And uh, at that time, uh, we had a contact with the, uh, with the client, and the client uh, uh, sees what I want to do with this idea of the superimposition of the new roof over the, the, the old roof. And he's very interested, and, and he says, you know, but there's a problem, your competitor, uh, has architecture, but no concept. You have a concept, by no architecture. So I was very proud, I was very, uh, but <laughs> uh, it was really a danger signal. He was really trying to tell me, I don't know what it's gonna look like, and you're not going to get the job. So that evening, with a terrible flu, uh, and taking whatever, you know, aspirin and, and probably one more whiskey than I should have, I started to rip pieces from magazines 
and start to finish the drawing to give a sort of uh, images. They were done quite fast. I was in a state of stupor and gave it uh, the next day to the client and actually soon, uh, sooner, uh, soon after that we actually got the job. Uh, other examples of, of these type of, of, uh, of thinking work uh, when the 19, uh, 1997, I believe, uh, the Museum of Modern Art decided to expand its facilities and organize a competition among 10 uh, architects, all of the same generation, actually, um, uh, with uh, people like uh, uh, Vilheras, uh, Rem Koolhaas, uh, Massimo Villiers, no, no, sorry. Vignoli, not Massimo, uh, Vignoli, the architect, uh, and, and, and a few others, um, uh, with one exception, Taniguchi, who is substantially older than we were, uh, we, we were asked to do, uh, amusingly enough, a sketchbook. By the way, as I said, you know, I hate the word sketches because of the sentimental notion that it has, and uh, but trying to find out what could be potential concept for uh, the new museum. And out of these, quote, quote, out of that sketchbook, which of course was an easy way for the Museum of Modern Art to get another piece by 10 reasonably good architects in their collection, because they kept the original sketchbook. Uh, the, uh, so the work was simply trying to find what organization of spaces, uh, first in an abstract manner, then in a way which would be uh, more uh, uh, connected to the actual site. And then, uh, the, as you can see, it's a series of, of spaces. It's a sequence of spaces uh, that uh, uh, becomes like a, uh, like a town in the town, if you want. And then th that becomes the project itself, etc. Within that uh, sequence of organization was uh, the notion, and that was an analogy that was played with, uh, with uh, gases and uh, magma and crust and tectonic plates. Uh, the the, the, the uh, museum wanted to have satellite galleries, main galleries and satellite galleries. And I propose the reversal of that, in other words, that the, uh, the satellites would be on the periphery um, and the, the central place. Anyway, so I just, just think. Okay, uh, uh, take another case, that's the uh, a School of Architecture, where the first diagrams, but do I call them diagrams? Do I call them notation? Uh, I prefer the word notation for now simply because the word uh, diagram has been fetishized in the last, all oh, about uh, 10 years ago, too many people writing about it and, and theorizing about it when it's something much more direct than that, I believe. Uh, and the organization, uh, after all, could not be simpler. You have, you know, just, you, uh, as I, I keep saying, you don't, you hardly need to know how to draw after a few months of that, you know how to do it. And that is basically the start of the organization around a large space, as you can see the, build, the, 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 the diagram on the top left. And then around that large space, you have a series of, of, of elements, which are either the uh, faculty offices or the studios. Uh, so, and eventually, uh, you know, the building can get built. That's the case of this, uh, of another school of architecture in Miami, Florida where the first diagram is simply uh, here perspectival, which is unusual, uh, but uh, shows that there is uh, uh, here, again, uh, two uh, relatively uh, generic uh, pieces of, of uh, you know, slabs, and then in the middle, uh, a, uh, something whose shape is to be determined. In other words, at that time, it's a pure concept. You do not know what it's going to look like. You know, you have two slab and a space in between with something in it, uh, you know, and you don't even know whether it's going to be in form, uh, in, you know, informal, formless rather, uh, or will have a form. Uh, you can, of course, translate it into, uh, into more presentation drawings like, but again, the concept is before that. Or you can test certain things when you're looking for that form, 
uh, you are actually in this case trying, we were trying to inject movement into it and to see how the movement of bodies uh, around that, that auditorium would deform the auditorium and give it its architectural sort of uh, uh, expression. Uh, eventually, uh, uh, reality uh, comes to the fore. We had to do that for $132 a square foot. For those of you who know about cost of building, know that uh, you have to invent then very, very simple uh, means of prefabrication. We used sort of huge concrete slabs uh, that we you know, literally uh, connected together and gave the building itself. But once again, it all starts with those very, very, very simple uh, um, uh, notations. Even here, but that's another, that's more in the, uh, the side effect, uh, which uh, maybe is not, has nothing to do with my argument, but I thought it would be amusing to show it. Uh, that was a, uh, a building that we did for um, uh, that Time magazine in, in 2000, or just before 2000, uh, wanted to have in their first of January 2000 issue uh, a house of the future uh, one, and we were two architects doing it, or three, uh, but I think two uh, doing one. For, I did the house of the city, and the, the other one did the house in the country. And it was a house in the uh, in the uh, in the sky, you know, a sort of penthouse, right? Uh, and so we uh, we produced that drawing, showing people, you know, in their sort of state of exhibitionistic voyeurism or whatever you want to call it. And so we got a note from the um, from uh, Time Magazine saying that they couldn't publish it as such because it might offend some of their readers. So we redid that drawing. So we put clothes on, but we get them to kiss. Uh, but that's probably had nothing to do with the course. All right, okay. Uh, the, although amusingly enough, if that has something to do with the course, is a, a, a sort of a peripheral influences. I'm absolutely sure that the influence there was David Sally when he was doing his paintings, where he was on one hand drawing something which was halfway realistic, and then doing the line drawing around it. I wouldn't be surprised. And then, by the way, much later on, uh, I can't remember whether it was Apple or IBM, did a, uh, a publicity campaign a year later uh, using exactly that device. Anyway, so uh, take another case where you're trying to understand how materials are going to be opposed to one another. And so you start as, as silly as that. It's, you know, the, the, the drawing itself is probably an inch by an inch. Uh, uh, and uh, simply the, the, the overlap of, uh, of a polycarbonate skin with a wood skin uh, eventually turns into the project. And the stages in, and into eventually into the building itself uh, 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 there is that direct, and that's why I say it's not about representation. It's not about um, uh, elaborate things. It's a very direct shortcut, uh, very sh shortcut of something in the mind uh, that is, needs a mediation before it is turned into a, a, a proper architectural drawing. I could call it a pre-drawing, right? Uh, they are cartoon-like. Uh, very often, uh, but they are simply uh, there because the mind cannot directly um, uh, go into, you know, into a, a realistic drawing. You need a, a, a mediation. So those are mediations. Even the, the, then the more elaborate drawings uh, try to explain the idea of the, uh, the fact that the, 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 the skin, which is a common denominator, the roof, is also um, uh, has an, a, a, an outer layer, which is made of metal, an inner, inner layer, which is made of wood, and then all the circulation are made of glass. Uh, so that's, again, a concept uh, more than anything else, you, uh, and then when you build it, of course, the concept starts to play because the steel, the, the, the wood and all that. So these are things that come very early on. Um, uh, increasingly what happens, these are, are drawings, for example, that we were doing, we were doing a competition for a, a museum 
in Sao Paulo, where I had uh, seven or eight people around in the office, uh, around the table, and we were talking, what's the idea? And while I was drawing those diagrams, uh, you know, by hand, uh, the guys were taking it and drawing them with the computer, and, and so uh, in uh, the, the, the speed at which we developed the project was, was quite interesting. Uh, from uh, literally it was transposing a discussion on paper and then making it uh, into a building. We won the competition, but uh, for various reasons uh, it was never built. Uh, even the case of the New Acropolis Museum, uh, the site, you know all that, but the important thing, there are three parts to the sites, the, the, the archaeological remnants, uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the Parthenon itself and the sort of hidden site, which is several miles, uh, thousand miles away, or maybe two thousand miles away, which is, of course, the British Museum with the marbles. So uh, the first diagrams of trying to express those three layers uh, comes as a, uh, as a way to try to, to think about the issue. Uh, before one is trying to, uh, how could I say, to uh, um, uh, formalize it. It has nothing to do with form. Uh, movement diagram, by the way, that movement diagram must have been done 20 or 30 times till we got it right. So in this case, I have to say it's not a one second diagram. It's probably 19, 1925. Uh, and then uh, the, 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 the initial sort of superimposition of the three parts becomes the reality of the project. Or in this particular case, uh, uh, in Beijing, uh, all these parts have been demolished yet. There was a place called Factory 798 uh, that was to be demolished. We wanted to sa save it. It was a, f a factory area which had been taken over by artists and, and galleries. And uh, uh, as I was learning about all this, I was in the, uh, in the cafe uh, drinking an espresso with some of the gallery people and some of the artists, and they were telling me about it. And they said, well, it's got, it will be demolished in order to be replaced by uh, uh, something like a million square feet of, of housing, or 10 million square feet of housing, some, something absolutely huge. And uh, I said, well, and talking to them, literally on, uh, as one says, in the proverbial sort of napkin that you have when you're drinking that coffee, uh, started to draw uh, that floating city above the, um, uh, above the existing factories in order to keep them. The point about this, by the way, uh, it's amusing when, when I was doing those uh, quick drawings, I was certainly not thinking of Jonah Friedman, but somewhere in the back of my head, I'm sure that had to do something to do with it, and then the project develops, is becomes substantially more sophisticated because the, 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 the floating slab becomes a lattice. The lattice has points of support. The points of support are between the interstices of the site, etc., etc., and then it becomes uh, the project itself. Even blue, by the way, uh, blue, uh, starts with something else is what you start with when you do a project in New York City. You start with the zoning code and you try to simply see what, what, it's, what can you do with the zoning code. And uh, these were some of the possibilities. Meanwhile, we were, of course, doing it uh, more according to every one of the criteria, you know, uh, with, with, uh, with computers and calculation and, and, uh, and uh, zoning envelopes and things like that. But the general principle of organization of the, uh, of the volume could be done in several different ways. Amusingly enough, uh, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, the building that was built is a variation of the, the top left. But the middle right, uh, as you can see, is exactly a, a translation of the zoning code, not unlike what Asana did two years later with their museum, uh, the, the new museum on the Bowery. What I find interesting is Sana never mentions that this piling of the boxes is a function of the zoning code. They say it's an artist's gesture, right? But that's it's then one gets, in, oops, sorry, one gets into ideology and, and that's another story altogether.
Even uh, in the case of the um, of uh, the World Trade Center and 9/11, uh, uh, we had a, all architects, as those of you who, you know, in a way, were old enough to to get into the act, um, uh, were uh, so horrified. But after all, all architects and were immediately trying to design a, 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 a new replacements uh, while it was still smoking down there and there were still you know, victims buried. Um, uh, the New York Times, uh, a few months later, uh, wanted to organize a special issue of their uh, uh, Sunday magazine and asked a dozen uh, architects to meet together so that it would be a joint common work and we would talk and so I, um, uh, I went to uh, that first meeting and uh, I'll sh uh, I sh uh, thought, well, uh, let's see what are the different possibilities and simply drew a number of alternatives which are not at all trying to find a solution but uh, rather to see what is possible on the site. And if you look a little careful, carefully, you'll recognize uh, the, uh, what will become later the Foster uh, proposal or the SOM proposal or the Libeskin proposal. It's not that they were, they were not in these meetings and they, I'm sure they never saw the building, the, those dra that drawing, but it's simply saying that uh, these, uh, uh, the, combination, the combinations, the possibilities, have very little to do with creation. The myth of creation, as uh, Barth says, is a bourgeois myth. In reality, much of it is combinatory. Uh, in any case, uh, I left the meeting after that because uh, my dear colleagues kept talking, said, oh, it's got to be vertical, oh, it's got to be horizontal, oh, it's got to be diagonal, uh, and uh, even sectional, and so on. So I'll go a little faster, but Basically, that's uh, those simple organizational diagrams are basically uh, what you uh, want to, um, to... I often say to, 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 to my students, try to imagine a concept that you can tell to somebody else in two sentences over the phone. That's the drawn equivalent of that, right? Uh, and you can turn it again in a 3D, this, the, 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 the strategy is like a game, and the game can be played. So, or in this particular case, uh, the, um, the, the first drawing for an extension for a, a, a concert hall, a philharmonic hall for that uh, 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 quite interesting college in near Geneva, uh, started probably sitting on the second row where uh, Reinhold is sitting, and while listening to somebody giving a lecture, uh, you know, having a, uh, a piece of paper on my knee and uh, uh, just thinking about the project at the same time and drawing this and eventually coming to the project. At that moment, I would like to just to, 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 to say something about a drawing on one's knee. Uh, I'll, I'll read it to you since I, read it, I wrote it. Um, uh, should I use the word notation and never the word drawing? Again, I imply that the word drawing is, be, is much more elaborate than that. That's pre-drawing, that's notation. I never draw on a table. I would feel too much like, it would feel too much like work. Maybe at the office, when we're discussing issues, I might do a rough notation to clarify a point or sum up a set of alternatives. Most of the time, I draw on my knee in a taxi or in the subway. Even in the plane, I prefer putting the paper on my lap using a simple magazine as support. The unevenness of the support makes your thought the priority. It avoids being aesthetically inclined. Drawing is thinking. I'm bored lying down by the pool in the summer unless I'm working. But being with a piece of paper and a pen is not really working. It's sheer it can be sheer bliss, seeing thought materialize itself in front of your eyes through the almost unconscious mediation of your hand. It's a form of notation of the mind. I read already the part about it's not sketches, it's not croaky. 
Um, uh, I mentioned the point about the swollen hands. Uh, yeah, the arrest is... I wrote that one. Fifteen years ago, I had a horrific car accident. My right hand, wrist, and forearm were broken in 11 places, requiring a lot of titanium plates and rods, coupled with one's mind and a good surgeon at, Col at Columbia Presbyterian. The notational capacity of my hand is just fine. I actually fantasize I draw better now. That's what I told the surgeon, actually. Uh, so, and then you go, and so I, I think you, you, you got the point, right? So, uh, but it can take all sorts of different forms, and the, 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 the way, uh, amusingly enough, uh, on, on the left uh, was, uh, you, you, you probably all know that I had not uh, uh, drawn a project for seven years or for more, for, yeah, for probably, t uh, except for, for the Manhattan transcript, which are highly contrived, uh, drawn properly buildings for about 10 years or 12 years, uh, before doing the Lavillette competition. And the drawings you see on the left, uh, you can see are relatively clumsy compared to much later when we still, but you're faster and those are drawings, you know, again done on one's knee, uh, that simply are testing uh, sometimes uh, purely because you're going to send a fax or you're going to, uh, uh, how do you call it, uh, scan, you know, a, a thing and send it to somebody uh, as the thing. So uh, the, the point, I would rather leave it at that and uh, let, uh, let the discussion begin. Uh, so, but the point that I wanted to make is that there is drawing, which is a mode of representation, and there is, I'll leave us things, it gives us some, some light, right? Uh, it is a mode of representation, and there is a dr drawing which is simply a mode of notation of the mind. And this is something, after that, there is everything that can happen. But as a, in my very early introduction, I will never say that's the only way to do it, right? Just as there are certain things that you can do with models, there are certain things you can do with... Uh, uh, but there is a moment, a sort of intentionality, a concept, as I would call it, which uh, can be extremely fast without much drawing skill. Uh, again, with your left hand, you just get the habit. Uh, it can be done. Okay, thank you. Well, I'll, 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 I'll give you the first question. Uh, uh, what if you don't have a hand? Uh, Jean Nouvel, for example, the architect, simply talks. He's an amazing talker. Uh, he can, I was a member of the jury uh, in, um, uh, in a competition where he was a, uh, a competitor. Uh, he shows the, the drawing and he says, these drawings are not the right drawing. They're all wrong. I was not there. I was in Tokyo when my office did it. It's a lot, lot of crap. Now I'm going to tell you what I did, what I want. And in 10 minutes, he gave the most vivid description of the building, both how it worked and what it looked like, in a way that everybody in the jury, all 17 people, saw the building construct itself in front of their very eye. So, hence, if you're a good writer, you might do it as well, like that. Mm -hmm. 
of that. But, but um, you know, one of the ways in which we've been talking about drawing is related to the point you made, I think, when you're talking about the World Trade Center project, the, the, the originality problem, the problem of, in a sense, on the one hand, every drawing or sketch or diagram notation, uh, et cetera, is, is unique. And, and, and another level, like the way I've been saying it, is every drawing is a drawing of another drawing in some way. And so we're either like Friedman or, or whichever. So, so maybe it's worth trying to explore that because one of the things, in addition to, I think it goes along with your, you know, interesting kind of challenge to the, uh, to the word sketch. This was, this is going along with that is the problem of precedent. In other words, the, the Beaux Arts tradition always involved redrawing, you know, classical precedent. We don't do that anymore, uh, but at some level, we still, in some ways, internalize. Models, yeah, the, the thing is, uh, the, the drawing as imitation is very different from the drawing as, you know, conception, if you want. Uh, but you said something which is important, is that take what's here, you know, if it's uh, 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 then elaborated upon by Jean Nouvel, by Stephen Hall, by Bernard Schumi, or by Rem Kumas, will be very, very, very different buildings, right? So that's why I call it almost, it, it is a concept, but it is, or different ones in this case, you know, uh, and they are very well-known ones, by the way, there's not much originality, you just uh, re- uh, you know, the, the, the question you mentioned, the word precedent, uh, an, a number of things that you do will have a precedent. We, these days in the office, uh, develop, whenever we develop a project, uh, when we arrive at things we are happy with, we think could be the, 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 the scheme we are going to develop, I ask people to go through the internet and look for precedents because you always find that somebody did it before you, right? It's very rare. So you have to then... Uh, uh, once I, I, I mentioned that to Peter Eisenman and he said, why, why should you care? And I said, well, sometimes you do, right? <laughs> it depends who it is. Yeah. I, have, I have another question about the word um, notation because the way we've been um, talking about notation in the class through history and through various kinds of drawings is that the way you notate a drawing as it, as it undergoes an architectural process changes. Right, so I was really interested that you, I know you don't want to call these sketches and that they're notations, but I'm wondering um, how, you know, whether anything is gained or lost along the way as other forms of notation um, impose itself on the drawing, like numbers, like um, scale, like, right? And when, when you start embedding it into all those architectural. Yeah, uh, uh, before that, uh, I just want to say one thing. I noticed that all these are axonometrics, yeah. Yeah, and that's very, very different. We have like 300 yeah, so very, very, very different <laughs> than doing uh, uh, perspectives. In other words, you generally do the axonometric first. It's a thing of the mind. While you do the perspective when you already have a perception of what it might be, so I would say the, 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 the perspective might not take much longer, but it comes right after th this, 99% of the time. Um, uh, then the fact that you add numbers and things like that, I did not bring because I didn't have time to bring you. You know, they are the same thing when you're working on doing a working details of uh, handrails over a cantilever, that's da da da, and you're trying to. So you, you're drawing it at first, it's not any different from that, but then, uh, and it's got nothing to do with the concept, frankly, it's trying to resolve, you know, uh, nuts and bolts and, 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 and a steel plate and a plate of perforated metal. Uh, the, the, the question is uh, that when you go to the next step and you, you have somebody take that, whatever you call it, right, uh, 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 hand-drawn uh, 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 sort of diagram, uh, then it's drawn much more precisely, then you add numbers and all that, but to me, it's simply the evolution of a, 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 the normal evolution of the process. There's no qualitative 
change as you move from one to another. It's a, only a quantitative change. A working drawing, yeah, I can, it's too far at one moment, I showed you that sort of uh, drawing for, the, for, for a project called the Tokyo Opera, which looks like a series of music notation and eventually becomes the plan, right? To me, there is no qualitative difference between each of these. There is only a quantitative, quantitative one, right? And it could go into working drawings, right? But I make the, 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 the main thing which I think is important, each of these drawings are indispensable to the, the, the thought process or the construction process. And I make a distinction uh, with the drawing which are pure representation. Right, which are there either representation uh, that's you so uh, you were at the at the crit uh, in the studio last year last semester when we were asking the students to do a mode of representation for the developer, one for the uh, client, and one for the architect. Uh, so those are formulaic; they are somehow using conventions, the convention of hyperrealism, the convention of friendliness, or the, con con uh, uh, the convention of intelligence. Uh, yes and no, uh, because in between there is something called editing. Much of the work, and uh, I would say myself, but again I, I leave it open, I'm not saying, is that you go through a lot of, uh, of thought and testing things, right? I've shown you only, uh, I could have taken uh, one project where it goes to six or eight different worlds and indeed you don't know what you're doing, right? We've done competitions where uh, we had uh, six or four or six projects being developed at the same time in the office. When that happens, it means that we don't know what we're doing. And then a few days before submission, ah, you get, you get it, you, uh, you understand what you intend to, you wake up at three o'clock in the morning and you, you see it clearly. Uh, so. But what it means is simply that whether you do things consciously or not, at one moment you have to be a, a tough editor. You can't let it, you know. Even the surrealists, when they were doing automatic drawings or the automatic writing, there was always a moment, a critical moment. And so uh, uh, that, that critical uh, editing uh, I believe that you have to do it in architecture more than in anything else, because at the end of it, it costs a lot of money, it's got to uh, respond to regulations and whatever, right, and gravity. I don't know if I answered your, your question, but... Uh, there are a couple more, we do have a class, I guess, coming yeah. in, so we'll take a few yeah. minutes. Okay, waiting more. a few minutes, Jesse? Jesse, you're okay for a few minutes? Okay. okay, great. There was also one here. Yeah. Okay, why don't you start and then you know. Right. Yeah, look, uh, uh, I would say vision uh, come once, uh, you know, not once in a lifetime, but every now and then. But I don't believe in vision. Uh, 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 the only example that I showed you here where I walked onto the site and I saw the project was the one with the big roof over the old roofs, right? Uh, all the other ones are part of a combination you know, system, you look at what the range, because otherwise you run into the risk of being completely naive. 
you know, visions are most of the time repetitions of what you have seen already, you know. So I, I'll be, uh, or if you have an intu I, I'd rather use the word intuition, which to me, an intuition is a shortcut of intelligence, is a shortcut of reason. You don't go through the whole process. Uh, of course, you may have a, a, an intuitive vision, fine. The point is, you better verify that the vision makes sense. Otherwise, you are at risk, again, being completely naive. Uh, uh, I do not think that uh, even uh, architects who have pretended that they were sort of, you know, artists uh, who would do the, um, you know, take uh, Niemeyer. It's also very, very calculated the way he works. Uh, I'll give you another example. Um, uh, my friends of Coop Himmelbla, who were doing project by uh, starting the project, binding their heads right, and one would start a, a, a scribble on a, on a, on a piece of um, a paper, and then his partner would do the same thing and do another scribble, and then they would try to give an interpretation to the scribbles. The interpretation process was really the real work. It was not the scribble. Um, oh, it's just the best term. I think uh, I, the, 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 the word has always existed. After all, uh, in the uh, 18th century or 19th century, you had uh, um, uh, theorists uh, like Blondel and a few others who would do uh, diagrams, right? They would do line things and show typologies or whatever. So uh, the word diagram, hey, architects, uh, before, our, you know, uh, 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 shoot, Bob Evans, Robert Evans, uh, famously, fam Robin, famously said, uh, architects don't build, they draw. Uh, I think it's true up to a point, right? I would say uh, architects don't draw, they think before they draw. Uh, uh, when the architect was on the building site before schools of architecture uh, and tracing with, you know, his foot in the sand, you know, a way to connect a wall to another wall or place a wall, uh, that was a diagram, but it was done with his bare toe. So uh, the, the, it's the word that got fetishized, not the activity. The activity has been here for year, for four thousand, well, probably thousand years. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think we should probably. Yeah, you better go. Okay. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, and we really appreciate your time. <laughs> Thanks for me. It was really it was great. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs>